Bereshit bara Elohim. These were the first words we heard and as we start today to mark this Easter vigil. They are the first words in the Bible. Bereshit bara Elohim. In the beginning, God. You see, my dear friends, my dear sisters, my dear brothers, our Bible is so interesting because even if you go to the first page of the Bible, we hear the name of our God, Bereshit bara Elohim. He is the first person who appears on the scene of life. And then we are told that what does he do? So to say, to work out his plan, he spread light. Let there be light. So it's like God wants to work. So he has to put on his light. To give light so he can work. And his work was just to work on you, to work on me. And then we hear that he created this, he created that. He created this, and he created that. And after each day comes the sequence, or the phrase, and it was good. And it was good. And it was good. Then after the sixth day, after creating man, the words change. And it was very good. You see? You are a very good before God. Amen. Amen. Those days when I was in school and then your teacher marks your paper and put it good. You are not happy. But the teacher writes there, very good. It's a remark that means that you are a, a good student. You are a first class student. So God is saying, look, you in his image, I in his image, we are his first class of creation. Amen. Amen. And no wonder, if we see Father and the man service and the lectures coming from Mass, who comes at the last? Is the man service? Who comes at the last? The, the lectures? You see, in the procession, the last person, the one who comes at the bottom, is the one who is the most important. See the procession of creation. Light, earth, heaven, animals. And then we human beings, we come at the last in the procession of creation. So you see, even creation tells that you are special. In the procession of creation, we human beings, we come last. Man and woman walking behind all creation. So it's like God is telling us, the sun comes, it bows away. The moon comes, it bows away. Plants, the human beings become the last of God's creation in this procession. May you possess to the heart of God. Amen. Amen. And may you not lose your place in God's possession of creation. Amen. Amen. So God tries to make us very good. And then just two chapters. I said two chapters. After this experience, we hear that man and woman sinned. They went to eat of the wrong tree. The tree of no knowledge of good and evil. And so God has to drive them, so to say, from his garden. So since they're, they're driven away, if I can put it that way, men and women tried to come back to the Garden of Eden. They tried many ways. Abraham came, he tried, he couldn't get so far. Moses came, we heard that in the second reading, to the Israelites. God had delivered them from Egypt, from slavery. We are told that they had been there for 430 years, and then, at the end of that 430 years, God said, this night I'm working for you. You go and sleep and let me work. The Israelites slept, the Egyptians slept, and God was working. His plan. You see, in the night, when you sleep peacefully, your God is planning for you. Amen. Amen. When they were sleeping, God was planning for them. And then we are told it was that night that God indeed took them away from Egypt. And they sent them to journey towards their promised land. May every darkness in your life, may every shade of uncertainty in your life, may this God lead you out of those darkness. Amen. Amen. So he takes them out of Egypt, beautifully, through the promised land, to the wilderness, to their promised land. But we hear that they have to cross the Red Sea. So this is what the first, second reading says. God spoke to Moses. Why do you cry to me? Tell the sons and daughters of Israel to go forward. 
Sometimes the only key to unlock the gates, the doors of your life is just to, to go for it. Some of us, that's the only mistake we have. We want to see the door opened before we enter. Sometimes you don't need keys to enter a door. God is saying that not all doors need keys to enter. Amen. Amen. You know, there's a funny story I don't want to say for the sake of time. But men were put in a room and then the king said, you, three men, let's see who is the most brilliant. I'm putting a lock on this door in the most complicated of combinations. Let's see who open it. The three men sat down, two of them started, mathematicians, you know, calculus using all the, the binary theorems and the, you know, the mathematicians, physicians, do everything. Calculating what formula? You see using logarithms, you see using this, you know? And then the third man, he didn't write that on paper. He just got up and walked straight to the door. He said, door, he opened it and it was not locked. It was open. See, some of us behave like the two men. We sit down calculating how to get God to answer our prayers. Whereas it is just to go forward. Tell the Israelites to move where? Tell somebody sitting to you. Somebody sitting next to you. It's time to go forward. It's time to go forward. We don't have our doors open because we are waiting for the formulas before we open. No. Faith has no formula. Once you believe that this door will open, go to it and to open for you. It is not me speaking or saying it. This is our God. So tell them to go forward. They could see a sea, huge one, and yet they say, go forward. They march. And as soon as they moved forward, the sea started opening up. May you march through the red seas of your life. Yeah. You know, some of us, we have red seas that are very deep. So we are afraid. There is fear. If I step in it, to carry me away. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. God says we shall walk through that Red Sea on dry land. Yeah. Just as he did for the Israelites. Nobody has heard that before. Human beings walking in the middle of the sea on dry land. That will be your story. I said that will be your story. Yeah. And then indeed, they walk through dry land as if the sun was there at night. May all your nights be turned into sunlight. Amen. Amen. So the Israelites make it to the promised and then they still went wayward. God had to send prophets the year of Ezekiel today who spoke to them. Still men were not coming close to God. They couldn't go back to the garden. So God said of, thought of something. Let me put in place plan B. Plan B. The plan A's are not working. For you, your plan A is that well, maybe if I do fasting, how it will work. If your plan A's are not working, try your plan B's. Maybe you need confession for that issue to, over, to, to come out of you, to overcome that. Let us try the options, the plan B's. So God said, look, these men and women, they need a plan B. May God make a plan B for you. And thinking of a plan B, he said, let me send my son to walk on their planet, on their earth. So Jesus came walking on this same earth. God walked where you are walking. Can you imagine that? God, our Savior, came to walk on the same planet you are walking. Just because God loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his... The Catechumens know that verse very well. You see, so Jesus comes and he walks in your footsteps. He just wants to be like you. Wherever you have walked and you fell, he will go there and then go through the same pain. Some of us, our sicknesses, our marriages, the work we are not getting, the business, some of us, the education, our plans, these become hurdles for us. Jesus is there with you in your pain. Amen. Amen. Because he came upon this earth and he has walked your walk. May he always work with you when life is so difficult for you. Amen. Amen. So God sends his rescue operation, I will call it now. And the rescue operation is that Jesus go and take their place. He comes, we heard that yesterday, Good Friday, and then he gave up everything, his life. On the cross yesterday we heard at the Good Friday service that when he had suffered and suffered and suffered and was about to die, 
after taking vinegar from John's gospel, then he said, it is finished. It is finished. In the time of Jesus, at the time of Jesus, when you owe someone and you are paying in bits, and you pay something, the person will give a receipt to tell that you there's a balance you owe. You go and pay again, she gives you a receipt to tell you there's a balance to pay. And then when you have finished paying the last of the what you owe the person, she will put a stamp on it, and that stamp, they have the words, it is finished. So you see, Jesus is saying that he has paid the last penny of your debt. The debt you owe, the debt you owe. He said today, once you are a Christian, it is what? Finished. So what is it that you are afraid of? It is finished. He has paid a debt he did not owe. We owe a debt we could not pay. We need somebody to what? Wash our sins away. Then Jesus comes. So how much do you owe? Mention it, he pays everything and then place the stamp there. It is finished. Go home. It is finished. Go in peace. It's finished. Everything we are going through in life, which is becoming difficult for us, today Jesus is saying that it is finished. He said it is finished. He said it is finished. I don't know what you want to end in your life, but today Jesus, by rising from the dead, has stamped it. That difficulty, it is finished. Another way to say this, it is accomplished. He has accomplished all our difficulties, our pains. So the next time you go through difficulties, even those of us going through now, you are not alone. It is accomplished. He is the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. He will what? Accomplish it. Indeed, he has done that already. I will end my reflection with what we heard in the Gospel. These women, we are told, got up quite early when it was still dark. I realized that it is in the night that God does the most beautiful thing, the Red Sea, the Passover, resurrection. Because in the night, that is where the devil seems to be at his peak. But that's where God says, look, even when the devil is at his peak, it is there that I dismantle, I dismantle everything. So God is saying that even for him, night is not night. Are you afraid of the night? Some people cannot sleep by here. They are afraid that something will happen to them in the night. Today, this message is for you. You will now begin to sleep sound. May you never be afraid of the, of the night. Your God has taken away that darkness. Sleep and leave the rest to God. Amen. Amen. Don't be afraid of night. It is not your portion. So these women come the night and then they meet who? An angel who are taking away their problems. The stone. They were thinking of how to get the stone away. The angel had gone ahead of them. You see, if we prepare for God, he will prepare for you. Because they have prepared to come back, God prepared an angel to go and take away the stones. This year is just about four months old. Some of us might be expecting some stones on this year ahead of us. God will send his angels to move that stone ahead of you next month. Ahead of you three months time. Ahead of you in December. Prepare for him and he'll prepare for you. Isn't God beautiful? Isn't God interesting? Isn't he wonderful? When you give him time, he gives you the worth of time. And then we are told that the stone was taken away and the angel sat upon it. We begin to sit upon every stone in your life. Sitting on a stone means that it is now useless. May every difficulty in our life become useless because we shall begin to sit on our stones one by one. So we hear again for the last time that when they were leaving, then they encountered, encountered the man of Jesus. After coming, they are leaving, they encountered Jesus. Today is Easter vigil. The Easter has begun. We have come to the empty tomb. This is our empty tomb. We shall leave to go back to our homes, to our places. May you, like the women, encounter Jesus today. As you go through the rest of the 50 days of Easter, may you encounter him, even at work, in your marriages, at home, even in sickness, even in pain, even in joy. May Jesus meet you, meet you, and encounter you. Amen. Amen.
I'll end with this phrase from verse from Exodus chapter 12, verses 42. That when the Israelites were sleeping, God kept vigil. Take that passage and read. Your God cares for you. Whenever you are sleeping in life, whenever you are going through challenges in life, know that Jesus is alive. And once he's alive, he will keep vigil for you. This story is a reality because if you go today to Jerusalem, Israel, the tomb is still empty. 2,000 years and over, the tomb is still what? It's still empty. It was empty 2,000 years ago, it's empty today. May Jesus keep always to empty every tomb that we come across. Remember this story, that the tomb is still empty. God is still with you. Amen.